হ্যালো হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ শোনা যাচ্ছে ক্লিয়ার হ্যালো শান্তনু দা হ্যালো শান্তনু দা বলছি নবনীতা ম্যাডাম জয়েন করতে চাচ্ছেন হ্যাঁ ওনার ফোন নাম্বারটা তোমাকে বলবো তুমি ওনাকে ফোনে সেন্ড করতে পারবে লিঙ্কটা আমি বলছি হ্যাঁ নাম্বারটা বলছি জাস্ট আ মিনিট এইট সিক্স ওয়ান ডাবল সেভেন এইট জিরো নাইন টু সেভেন এস বর্ণা লিখে হ্যাঁ হুম হুম হ্যালো 
হ্যাঁ বর্ণালী পাঠিয়েছ পাঠিয়েছ ওকে পাঠিয়ে দাও থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাছ আমি বলে দিচ্ছি পেয়েছেন পেয়েছেন হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ দেখুন এই এক মিনিট বর্ণালী তুমি হোয়াটসঅ্যাপ করেছো ম্যাডাম কে ওই নাম্বারে হোয়াটসঅ্যাপে হোয়াটসঅ্যাপে পাঠিয়েছো হ্যাঁ আপনার ওই নবনীতা দিদির আগের নাম্বারটা যেটা কল করেছিলেন ওইটাতে হোয়াটসঅ্যাপ করেছে বর্ণালী শান্তনু আর ইউ হিয়ার শান্তনু বলুন বলছি নবনীতা জয়েন করছেন না আচ্ছা ওকে বর্ণালী আই সেন্ট দা এখনি কল করেছিল বর্ণালী ওনাকে পাঠাচ্ছেন এটা হোয়াটসঅ্যাপ করেছেন
गुड इवनिंग नवनीता दी नवनीता दी यस नाउ शी इज जॉइन यस शी हैज जॉइन आई कैन फाइंड हर नेम हियर गुड इवनिंग नवनीता दी ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ नेताजी नगर डे कॉलेज I extend a warm welcome to Professor Navanita Chatterjee, who is a professor of philosophy at Dinobondo Andrews College, Goria, and is a nominee of the University of Calcutta on the governing body of Netaji Nagar Day College. I extend a cordial and warm welcome to her. has not yet heard something i think i think it is 5:30 so we shall i start. yes i think we should start okay ma'am has been waiting yes So good evening everybody it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all once again to yet another webinar being organized by Netaji Nagar Day College this Sunday the 30th of August 2020 I am Dr S Ganguly of the Department of English and I am one of the conveners of this webinar being conducted today as you all are aware ever since the lockdown started the different departments of our college have either singly or in collaboration organized a number of seminars for the academic development of one and all this seminar is a result of a notification issued by the university grants commission the ugc on 25th june this year a few months back directing all higher educational institutions to organize webinars on gender sensitivity and women's issues especially the problems faced by women in the covid-19 scenario in this context the internal complaints committee of netaji nagar day college wanted a program in which the physical mental emotional social and psychological problems of women could be discussed and analyzed in the purview of the unnatural circumstances that we are going through presently as well as find out what legal remedies are available to women in these circumstances we are very fortunate that to tell us more about this subject we have dr shochi chakraborty who is a professor of law as well as the dean of the faculty of law university of calcutta to illuminate us more about this issue i now invite the principal of netaji nagar day college dr shonali banerji josh to say a few words on the occasion thank you santu i am indeed honored to extend a hearty welcome to our resource person for today's webinar organized by the internal competence committee of netaji nagar day college we have with us today professor dr shochi chakraborty professor of law as well as dean faculty of law university of calcutta we are honored ma'am that you have agreed to deliver your lecture for us today we have with us today our governing body member professor nobunita chatterjee she has always been very supportive very encouraging and she has been particularly very um, she has always encouraged us about the activities of the icc 
So, Madam Nobunita Di, we welcome you on behalf of the college. I, I also extend a hearty welcome to all my colleagues, students, and as well as uh, participants from India, as well as from other countries, neighboring countries. Actually, we find that even in this 21st century, in spite of much talk about women's empowerment, women's liberation, domestic violence against women is still going on. It is a menace. It is an evil, a social evil, which we have not been able to eradicate, particularly in our part of the globe. It is really a burning issue. Though several women, though a large section of women today are now economically independent, still we find that domestic violence against women is still continuing. And we must confess that we know very little. In fact, we do not know what are the remedies, what are the laws that can protect women against domestic violence. So against this background, the internal complaints committee of our college thought it pertinent to organize a webinar on this topic, legal remedies for women against domestic violence, particularly in during this ongoing pandemic situation. I'm sure that we will be able to learn a lot from Madam's discourse today. So with these words, I once again welcome you all to today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sonali Banerjee Josh, our honorable principal, for a very enthusiastic speech and for putting today's the subject of today's uh, webinar in its proper perspective and highlighting what the expectations of all of us are regarding the issue of legal remedies that women may use to protect themselves in abnormal circumstances that we are passing through. With this, we come to the end of the inaugural session. We will now move to the technical session in which we will have the pleasure of listening to Dr. Shochi Chakraborty, Professor of Law, and Dean of the Faculty of Law, University of Calcutta. I now invite Dr. Shoti Chakraborty to deliver her lecture. But before that, I request Dr. Bornali Dotto to formally introduce the resource person for today's webinar. Dr. Bornali Dotto teaches in the Department of Mathematics in Netaji Nagar Day College and is the convener of the Internal Complaints Committee of this college as well as the convener of today's seminar along with me, Dr. Bornali Dotto.
many thanks dr bornali dotto for formally introducing our resource person for today i now hand over the platform to our resource person so that she may deliver her much awaited lecture and before that i once again record my gratitude to professor dr shochi chakraborty for taking time out of her busy schedule to agree and to agree to deliver the invited lecture in today's seminar on a topic of great relevance in the circumstances that we are passing through now i request dr chakraborty to deliver her lecture thank you dr shantanu gandhi well uh, all ladies and gentlemen present here good evening to all of you internal complaints committee of netaji nagar day college kolkata has organized this state level webinar on a very relevant topic and sensitive topic on of, of domestic violence in present pandemic situation which has created great havoc all over the world already more than 2 crores 50 lakhs people have been affected till now and around 8 lakhs people died in the world in india more than 35 lakhs people are affected by this corona virus and more than 63000 are dead during this critical situation netaji nagar day college has organized this webinar and interested upon me to lead a discussion on the domestic violence situations in india and the re legal remedies which are available to women victims of domestic violence and for giving them proper justice i feel myself honored and privileged for getting uh, this opportunity <clears throat> to speak on such a burning and sensitive issue today i am highly thankful to principal of this college madam dr sonali benerji and also to the organizing committee for uh, giving me this privilege i also i am also thankful to governing body member nobanita di who is present here and my special thanks to dr santanu ganguly and dr barnali datta and other organizers who have taken all the initiatives for organizing this webinar my sincere regards and thanks to all participants of this program i congratulate you all now the issue of domestic violence is a very very sensitive issue actually this is very different from other kinds of violence now we have we can know about too many violence different kinds of violence against women today's topic is legal remedies for women against domestic violence in contemporary situation covid situation now first of all i will start from the quotation of sydney sydney brandon that in her book uh, violence in family of 1976 she mentioned that statistically it is safer to be on streets after dark with a stranger than at home in the bosom of one's family for it is there that accident murder and violence are likely to occur a central theme for the women's movement all over the uh, world has been violence against women <coughs> both in their homes and outside this is directly linked to their unequal position in the patriarchal society 
cutting across both class and community crime and violence against women is a global phenomenon and it is the result of gender inequalities and discriminations against women these are there are we have got so many empirical evidences of gender inequalities and discriminations all over from all over the world different countries of the world which denote the masculine control over feminine gender like chinese foot binding female circumcision in africa middle east jordan syria and other countries european witch murders wife sale in england witch hunting and sati dowry killing and domestic violence in india in almost all societies of the world women have been subordinated to men women played a passive part in society they were only a thing of enjoyment for men in theory women were respectable but in practice they are the subjects of cruelty ill treatment and all sorts of misbehavior by males and in ancient period actually what manu stated that yatra naryastu pujyante na ramante tatra devata that means where women are worshiped the god is present there but in fact this principle was in theory not in practice because we have seen the instances that lord rama rebuked sita after war with ravana in mahabharat draupadi was divided by the five pandavas periodically for their sexual enjoyment ours is the patriarchal society and male dominated patriarchy is directly related to the uh, crime against uh, women crimes are patriarchal manifestations both at public and private sphere of life now the question is what is patriarchy it means a form of social organization in which the father is the supreme authority in the family clan or tribe and descent is reckoned in the male line with children belonging uh, to the fathers clan or tribe a society a community or con the country based on this social organization that is patriarchy now patriarchal manifestation operate both in public and private domain spheres of life in public sphere we find sexual harassment at workplace uh, inequality in employment under representation in vast majority of the legislatures around the world under representation in the higher echelons of professions for management and industry rape at workplace in private sphere division of labor within the family invisibility of <coughs> women's work women are confined to the private domestic world and which is actually which is traditionally unregulated by law simon d beaver a famous sociologist in her book the second sex she wrote this humanity is male and man defines woman not in herself but as relative to him she is not regarded as an autonomous 
being she is defined and differentiated with reference to men and not he with reference to her she is the incidental the inessential as opposed to the essential he is the subject he is the absolute but she is the other this was written by simon d beaver in her book now friends patriarchy has rendered women to abuse manipulations and violence domestic violence is inherently and inseparably connected to male power and female powerlessness male dominance and female subordination domestic violence perpetuated in the private sphere of life the home is a prime manifestation of patriarchal authority <clears throat> the gender inequality of the public world becomes reinforced in the private world of the family before going into details of domestic violence we have to understand what is violence against you what is the meaning of violence how it is explained in different human rights instruments and other laws violence means violation of rights and fundamental freedoms of women and impairs or nullifies their enjoyment of those rights and freedom in 1993 united nations general assembly entered a resolution and there was a declaration uh, on elimination of, of against women. so article 1 if we go through article 1 of the declaration on elimination of violence against women and also the platform for action from the fourth world conference in beijing on women in the year 1975 what define violence as as an act of gender based violence that results in or is likely to result in physical sexual psychological harm or suffering to women including threats of uh, such acts coercion or arbitrary deprivation of liberty whether occurring in public or in private life therefore violence is an act of aggression that crosses the boundary of another person's autonomy and identity it is a coercive instrument to assert one's will over the another to prove or feel a sense of power domestic violence is a human rights issue and this is serious deterrent to development the phenomenon of domestic violence is widely prevalent but has remained largely invisible in the public domain domestic violence manifests as verbal physical psychological financial economic abuses often in forms that are more subtle than the violence elsewhere in society familiarity with the perpetrator and filial values deter resistance close doors alienate the victim from remedies 
if the victim reconciliate with subjugation it it is violation of human rights liberty and human dignity victims inability to access law makes legal remedies ineffective although we have got many many legal remedies but they become ineffective because the victim can't access due to many many reasons can't access to the law the law which has been made by parliament they cannot access there is no proper access for the victim so many of the victims of domestic violence are at a risk of further violence or even death when they attempt to leave abusive relationships therefore most incidents of domestic violence go unreported because women are themselves reluctant to bring a complaint against a member of their own family they are very much hesitant they will not go for complaining because they think that problem will be solved in near future all these factors render the issue of domestic violence very very different from other forms of violence because of the women's weak and vulnerable position in their home now what about the statistical data statistical data on the incidence of domestic violence in india is very scant and the few studies which are available indicate that physical abuse of indian women in their home is rampant they are rampant they tortured in the home there are harassments humiliations and so on domestic violence against women figures as the top category of violence against women in 2018 according to data from the national crime record bureau that is crime in india report <laughs> compiled by ncrb the crime rate per lakh women with uh, per uh, per lakh women population is 58.8 in 2018 if we compare with 2017 in 2017 it was it was uh, 57.9 now out of total crimes registered under indian penal code against women <clears throat> the majority of the cases were registered under the cruelty by husbands or his relatives in india during the first four phases of covid 19 related lockdown situation indian women filed more domestic violence complaints than recorded in a similar period in the last 10 years in fact 86% women who experience domestic violence do not seek help in india in 2020 between march 25 and may 31 at first uh, 1477 complaints of domestic violence were made by women this 68 day period recorded more complaints than those received between march and may in the previous 10 years about 86% women who experienced violence never sought help and 77% of victims did not even mention the incidents to anyone in, to anybody only 14.3% of victims sought help from a source among these 14.3% only 7% reached out to relevant authorities the police the doctors lawyers 
social activists or social organizations social service organizations so more domestic violence complaints in red zones during lockdown are found examining this data the researchers have uh, found that the average number of monthly domestic violence complaints per red zone district was below 1.5 in march 2020 which went up to almost 2 in may 2020 meaning thereby that uh, 45 complaints in 30 days in march and 60 complaints in may 2020 now the national commission for women has seen a spike in the complaints it receives its chairperson rekha sharma told the bbc now nc they have actually launched whatsapp helpline for women during the lockdown the the messaging app is a safe option for those who cannot make calls for fear of being overheard by the other members between 23rd march and 16th april 2020 the first 3 weeks of lockdown the commission received 239 complaints of domestic violence this was a significant jump from 123 complaints it received before the lockdown so this was actually the regarding the data what i explained now what might be the reasons for uh, domestic violence during lockdown what are the reasons behind i can say here that one economist and professor ashwini deshpande at delhi's ashoka university he has uh, mentioned that the abuser he lays down the reason for domestic violence the abuser feels frustrated and angry because of lack of control due to the constraints imposed by lockdown and this prompts him to exercise greater control by abusing his partner or children often with violence early in april un secretary general antonio gutres said that there was a horrifying global surge in domestic violence and it lockdowns the calls to helplines doubled in lebanon malaysia and tripled in china compared with same time last year according to qn now according to bbc reports bbc reports that on 18th april uh, one uh, lady tara whose name has been on request went online to search for helpline is her husband of 15 years in marriage it has been abused emotional and at times uh, even physically but job which kept her busy and out of the house for most of the day and her husband often travel to work out of the town which kept him up this lockdown however changed everything ara lived in a constant fear that any time husband may change his mood her mother in law and her husband both taunted her abused her that she is not a good wife or mother they ordered her to serve 
elaborate meals and treated her like a domestic worker. Now, unable to bear this abuse and beatings, she decided to seek help. She found a Facebook page uh, run by Invisible Scars, a support group, and contacted them. The founder of, of the support group laid out all the options which are available to Tara, that is legal remedy, that she can register a police complaint, she can seek legal separation, or even talk her husband into going for counseling, and so on. Tara warned her husband that she would go to the police abuse is stopped for a few days but started again she says that leaving is not an option she cannot trouble her parents and her young child only god can save her so this is the situation actually of the women in india generally that god will help they will not go for any proper complaint or go for any uh, legal remedies. So this is the irony. Now, I am frankly speaking that in India, divorce is socially discouraged. Everybody knows it. That in, 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 even in educated family, the divorce is socially they are discouraged and women do not want to leave an abusive spouse. They want to teach them a lesson or make them behave better. A few families would support daughters who want to walk out of the abusive marriages. Even parents do not support, especially if they have children, as Tara does. And leaving to, uh, leaving to go to stay in a shelter home or with parents is especially hard during lockdown period when the transport has been very limited. So, this is the irony, actually, that even after suffering a lot, the women are not coming to complain. Most of the time, they do not know what are the laws, the legislations. We have got uh, many other laws under IPC, there is one section 498A IPC, which was uh, which was uh, put in IPC by the amendment of 1983 IPC Amendment Act. This section actually is very very important that it explains regarding the duality by husband and in-laws. That if the woman is harassed uh, physically, mentally or she is harassed for any dowry event, or any demand is there, or she is being coerced for that, then she can file a complaint to the police. And this actually offers under 498A IPC is, is uh, cognizable and non valid But very few complaints are made under this. And even sometimes, if they are made, sometimes the, uh, this law is even abused also. So that is a criminal law remedy. Now, the Domestic Violence Act was intended to, make, made, to be made a civil law. But due to certain powers have been given to the magistrate and even the offenses under this, the, the, I mean, the breach of um, law has been made offenses here, then therefore the law has been has become quasi civil in nature this is not purely civil but quasi civil so uh, protection of domestic violence act uh, protection of women uh, from domestic violence act 2005 this act provides for more effective protection of the rights of women guaranteed under the constitution who are victims of violence and for matters occurring within the family and for matters connected therewith. 
or incidental therapy. And this act was, uh, I told you that uh, this was intended to make it civil in nature, but this is now quasi civil in nature. Act of violence is treated as an offense and punishment is provided for violation of the orders. Now, what is the definition of domestic violence as per the act? As per the protection of women from domestic violence act section three, section three uh, lays down that protection of uh, women for the domestic violence act includes that will uh, constitute harms or injuries or endangers to health, safety, life, limb or well-being, whether mental whether mental or physical of the aggrieved person or tends to do so and includes causing physical abuse, sexual abuse, verbal and emotional and economic abuse or harasses, harms, injures or endangers the aggrieved person with a view to coerce her or any other person related to her to meet any unlawful demand for any dowry or other property or valuable security. And also has the effect of threatening the aggrieved person or any person related to her by any conduct mentioned in above clauses or otherwise injures or causes harm whether physical or mental to the aggrieved person. Now, what is the meaning of physical abuse? Physical abuse means bodily pain, harm, danger to life, limb, health, criminal force, using of criminal force, assault, and so on. Now, what is the meaning of sexual abuse? Sexual abuse, such sexual conduct which humiliates, degrades, or otherwise violates the dignity of women. Then, what is the meaning of verbal and emotional abuse? That is, insult, humiliation, for example, not having a child or a male child, threat to cause physical pain. There are instances in the family that if the woman is not having a child or not bearing a male child, then she is very much accused and humiliated and tortured. Now, what is economic abuse? Deprivation of economic or financial resources. Istridhan, any property jointly owned or separately owned by the aggrieved person Disposal of household assets, valuables, shares, securities, bonds, any movable or immovable property in which the aggrieved person has an interest or is entitled to use by virtue of domestic relationship or which may be required by the aggrieved person or her children or her istridhan. <coughs> Now the question is, who is an aggrieved person? Section 2A of the Domestic Violence Act uh, explains about the aggrieved person. Aggrieved person means any woman who is or has been in a domestic relationship with the respondent and who alleges to have been subjected to any act of domestic violence by the respondent. Then there is another term which is used here, domestic relationship. Section 2F uh, defines domestic relationship. It means a relationship between two persons who live or have at any point of time lived together in a shared household when they are related by 
कॉन्सेंग्विनिटी मैरिज और थ्रू ए रिलेशनशिप इन द नेचर ऑफ मैरिज एडॉप्शन और आर फैमिली मेंबर्स लिविंग टूगेदर एज ए ज्वाइंट फैमिली सो दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हियर डोमेस्टिक रिलेशनशिप इट इज टू बी अंडरस्टूड बाई एवरीबडी वॉट काइंड ऑफ रिलेशनशिप कॉन्सेंग्विनिटी that is fa- even father uh, can be uh, can be uh, challenged for violating the rights of the daughter that is domestic violence and the mother can also uh, file a case against son the marriage or to nature of marriage nature of marriage means live in relationship which is presumed the marriage which is by presumption that long cohabitation is there and the parties are treated as husband and wife then relationship by adoption and other relations family members which are living together as a joint family now who is a respondent respondent means the opposite party against whom the uh, complaint can be made that is section 2 respondent means any adult male person who is or has been in a domestic relationship with the aggrieved person and against whom the aggrieved person has sought any relief under the act legally married wife or female living in relationship are also included under the act women who are sisters sisters widows mothers single women are entitled to get relief under the act a mother is entitled to file complaint against son and also a daughter in law if she is maltreated by them now there is a term used shared household in the definition now section 2s uh, defines what is a shared household it means where the aggrieved person lives or at any stage lived in a domestic relationship either singly or along with the respondent shared household may be owned or tenanted it may be the it may the, the per, person must be having the title may be having the might be having the title or it might have been taken on rent tenanted owned or tenanted by either the respondent or aggrieved person it may be a household where both might have the right title interest or not it is immediate it may be the house of even joint family now here friends it is very important to note that in india there is a no concept of there is no concept of matrimonial home and matrimonial property and no law is there to tackle the problem of marital breakdown of the spouse wife who is victim of domestic violence cannot claim any right to live in the matrimonial home that is why the domestic violence act uh, provides a, uh, there is a provision for uh, right to residence right to residence in the shared household now this right to residence actually is not enough there must be some sub, sub, some sus, substantive right substantive right to the property right to the property that means the matrimonial home that as soon as the girl is married she goes to her in-laws house but she lives there say for 10 years 15 years and she sacrifices her life she works there day and night but if she is uh, if she wants to separate herself from the husband due to certain cruelty domestic violence she will have only the maintenance right she doesn't have any 
जो प्रॉपर्टी राइट वेयर शी कैन से दैट लिव हियर और आई राइट टू लिव हियर शी कैन नॉट से इफ वी कंपेयर इट विद अदर कंट्रीज लाइक इंग्लैंड अदर लॉज ऑन मैट्रिमोनियल प्रॉपर्टी द फैमिली लॉ एक्ट इज देयर ऑफ द ईयर 1986 मैट्रिमोनियल होम्स एक्ट Matrimonial Homes Act in England, 1967, which was, which were pa passed uh, to provide for matrimonial property concept. In uh, other countries, also uh, I've seen that in Canada, in uh, other countries, we can say they have got their uh, matrimonial laws, the matrimonial property laws, Family Law Act, like that. But in India, we don't have. Although the bill was prepared, but still. and this is not passed now i come to the complain portion now who can complain under this act who are the persons who can complain anybody can inform the protection officer regarding an act of domestic violence there are protection officers appointed by the government uh, state government in the districts so who can complain the neighbors the social workers relatives they can inform on behalf of the victims and even the victim can also complain now who are the protection officers and what are their duties there are certain sections in protection of domestic violence act section 8 where it is mentioned that the state government shall by notification appoint protection officers for each district the protection officers shall be preferably the women they shall be under the control of the magistrate now what are their duties section 9 of the act mentions about the duty that provides for the duty of protection officers to assess the magistrate to discharge his functions under this act to report a domestic incident after receiving complaint of domestic violence and to forward the application to the judicial magistrate and forward the copies of domestic incident report dir that is called dir to the police officer in charge of the local police station now the protection officer has to make an application in prescribed form to the magistrate if the aggrieved person desires to claim a protection order now the duty of the protection officer is also to ensure that the aggrieved person is provided legal aid legal aid free of cost that is under legal service authority act 1987 actually this is the central act and under central act the legal aid authorities are working in various all the states of india so they have the legal service cells and they are helping the uh, victims now to main uh, the duty of the protection officer is also to maintain a list of all service uh, uh, providers and to make available the safe shelter home if it is required or requested by the victim or the relatives and also to get the aggrieved person medically examined so protection officer has got a number of duties now to ensure that the order for monetary relief under section 20 is complied with now the service providers there is a provision for service providers under the act now section 10 uh, provides that any ngo voluntary association registered under the societies registration act 1860 or any company uh, whose main objective is to protecting the rights and interests of women by 
providing legal aid medical or financial assistance shall register with the state government as a service provider so they are service for so any ngo any voluntary organization but they must have been registered already under society's registration act and then they will register themselves to the state government as service service provider now what are their duties and powers a service provider shall have the power to record the domestic incident report dir in the prescribed form the copy will be forwarded to magistrate and protection officer and his duty is to get the aggrieved person medically examined and forward a copy to the protection officer and to the local police station it is also his duty to ensure that the aggrieved person is provided a shelter in a shelter room now i come to the powers of the magistrates who are very important in this act performing the important task because all the main powers are vested in them through sections 12 to 23 of protection of domestic violence act sections 12 to 23 now how the orders and reliefs can be obtained by the magistrate that first of all an application to magistrate will be made by the aggrieved person or a by aggrieved person herself or a protection officer or any other person on behalf of aggrieved person can be made now what are the different kinds of reliefs and orders so there are different types of orders like compensation order compensation or damages then protection orders re residential orders monetary relief custody orders interim and ex parte orders this there are these are the different kinds of relief which a magistrate can give now magistrates shall after receiving the application what happens magistrate shall fix the date of hearing within 3 days from the date of receipt of application within 3 days and magistrate shall try to dispose every application made within a period of 60 days from the date of its first hearing a notice of date of hearing is to be served upon the respondents through protection officers because if the notice is not served that means there is violation of nature of justice and it will be a notice will be served through protection officer upon the respondents or the opposite party now there is a provision for counseling this is very very important counseling is to be done as per section 14 magistrate can at any stage of the proceedings under this act direct the respondent or the aggrieved person to undergo counseling with any member of a service provider because counseling is very important as uh, to break a home is very easy but to make a home is very difficult that that's why everywhere not only in domestic wall under the domestic violence act but in every law at every time even at high court level superior level uh, the counseling is done by the uh, judges and even the lawyers try to do the counseling so counseling is very very important but now magistrate can pass the following some orders under section 18 to section 23 starting from 18 to 23 uh, under the domestic violence act protection order section 18 of the domestic violence act provides that magistrate can pass protection orders in favor of aggrieved person and prohibit the respondents from doing certain things so how can he prohibit he can prohibit the respondent from committing aiding or abetting the act of domestic violence then from contacting and com communicating the aggrieved person physically or electronically it magistrate can prohibit the respondent that that uh, he should not 
communicate either physically or uh, electronically even and magistrate can also prohibit uh, respondent from alienating assets the financial property that is uh, bank lockers including stridhan etc then magistrate can also uh, prohibit the respondent uh, from causing violence to the members of family who give assistance to a grieved person those who are assisting the victim the respondent cannot uh, do any harm to them now as per section 19 of the dv act domestic violence act uh, magistrate can pass residential orders the residential orders to protect the aggrieved person in the shared household he can restrain the respondent uh, from alienating the alienating or disposing of the shared household he can also direct the respondent to make any alternate provision or accommodation for aggrieved person magistrate can also direct the respondent to deliver the possession of her stridhan or any other property or valuable security to which she is entitled to. actually what is stridhan stridhan uh, includes the assets or the properties or the ornaments which are given at the time of the marriage by the by anybody by either maybe by in laws it may be by parents or so on or any other relative the ornaments or any security valuable security and if the respondent is not uh, delivering her the stridhan then he shall also be liable under section 405 and 406 of ipc not only against um, under the domestic violence act uh, under section 405 and 406 of ipc for criminal breach of trust and criminal misappropriation of property now section 20 of the dv act provides monetary relief what kind of monetary relief that magistrate may direct the respondent to pay uh, the re uh, monetary relief to meet the expenses incurred uh, and losses suffered by the aggrieved person and any child of aggrieved person as a result of domestic violence then there are custody orders custody orders can be passed for child for welfare of the child and children to the aggrieved person then as per section 22 compensation orders can be passed magistrate can direct the respondent to pay compensation and damages for injuries including mental torture and emotional distress caused by acts of domestic violence now there are other reliefs or the power of the magistrate uh, to grant interim or ex parte orders against the respondent if magistrate is satisfied that the situation so demands and the there is a prima facie uh, or domestic violence has taken place then he can order for uh, he can pass an interim order and even the ex parte order. now there are other provisions uh, which are also very important that uh, the protection officers who are appointed by the government state government they are deemed to be the public servant under section 21 of ipc and section 31 speaks about the penalty for uh, breach of protection order by the respondent if the respondent is violating the protection order passed by the magistrate then in either it may be interim or it may be final then he shall be uh, punishable with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 1 year or with fine which may extend to 20000 rupees or both so penal provisions are there now as per section 33 if protection uh, officer if uh, if the respondent fails or refuses to discharge his duties uh, the protection officer fails or uh, 
refuses to discharge his duties uh, as directed by the magistrate uh, in the protection order he shall be he shall also be punished he can be punished with imprisonment of one year um, and or fine up to 20000 or both now here i may time is i don't know how much time i am given <laughs> uh just a um, uh, few minutes i need here i may refer a case decided by the supreme court in respect of uh, the domestic violence act that live, uh, regarding the living relationship uh, the, the name of the case is uh, chanmuniya versus virendra kumar singh kushwaha 2011 one scc that is the citation that is this is found in first volume of supreme court cases of the year 2011 chanmuniya versus virendra kumar singh kushwaha in this case this it was decided by the supreme court the question was regarding maintenance to be paid in cases of live in relationship live in relationships and uh, presumed marriage de facto marriage and cohabitation cases and the interpretation of the uh, word wife the apex court opined that broad and expen uh, expensive interpretation should be given to the term wife to include even those cases where women and men are living together as husband and wife for a reasonably longer period of time and strict proof of marriage should not be a precondition uh, for maintenance as per section 125 as well as domestic violence act so if there is a case for maintenance and there is a live in relationship then the wife of, uh, she is presumed to be a wife she is not a legally married wife but she will be entitled to maintenance then another case which i am referring here uh, for your notice is the case uh, the name of the case is sr batra versus taruna batra that is of the year 2007 2007 3 scc page 169 in this case supreme court interpreted the term shared household within the meaning of section 2s of the domestic violence act the shared household would only mean house belonging to or taken on rent by husband or house which belongs to joint family of which husband is a member it does not include the house owned by mother in law the mother of the husband so this was the, the term shared household was interpreted in this particular case now actually the shared household is a misnomer here because i can point out certain loopholes in the protection of domestic violence act although the right of residence is given but there is no substantive right of the woman just to get a shelter where in a shared household where she is the victim of violence so this is like i mean uh, of no use because she has no substantive right and for that purpose i am just suggesting here that there should we should have in india we should have the matrimonial property law as well uh, neither the women cannot get the legal remedy uh, under domestic violence act and and also uh, i can suggest that uh, there are um, uh, that we have come to know about the service providers protection officers very few uh, protection officers have been appointed by the state government uh, if people go and make a survey then uh, very few protection officers are appointed by the government so my suggestion is to appoint more and more uh, protection officers in the various district of a particular then there is a question of sensitization actually laws might be there there are number of laws there are there is an umbrella of international human rights law cida then other declarations conventions even national laws are there uh, regarding violence uh, 
under ipc there have been many provisions any dowry prohibition act is there but the reality is that only law cannot solve the problems there must be the change in the social attitudes of the family of the society each and every member of the society must change their attitude towards women neither they cannot realize their legal remedies and even i just suggest here that the service providers police magistrates they must be sensitized in respect of gender issues and for issues of violence against women if they are not sensitized and well trained then the remedies which are available will be of no use and there are much last but not least the women should be made aware the women the, there must be the legal literacy program that in colleges universities we can arrange the our colleagues can arrange the legal awareness programs to make women aware of their rights protective rights under the protection of domestic violence act so again i thank you uh, my special thanks to principal of this college uh, organizers dr shantanu ganguly bernali dr bernali datta then the members who are present here governing body members navita di and all other uh, people those who have uh, assisted to organize such a beautiful seminar webinar sorry <laughs> webinar and uh, and i thanks all the participants who are present here for their patient hearing so thank you all you should i my best wishes are with you thank you Shantanu, please unmute yourself. Please unmute yourself, Shantanu. are not audible shantanu please check Okay, good. So my heartfelt gratitude to our honorable resource person, Dr. Shochi Chakraborty, for a comprehensive and illuminating discourse on the nuances of the gender law. interface that all of us were hither to ignorant about it is a matter of great regret that in india women who were once revered with the words yatha naryastu pujyante ramante tatra devata suffered progressive social denigration down the ages so 
so much so that once upon a time it came to be remarked dhol gawar sudra pasu nari sakal twadana ke adhikari it is really very disappointing and the situation has not improved even in the present in the present century and the lockdown has not done anything to improve matters no wonder then that the famous hindi poet maithili sharan gupt or oh no it's makanlal chaturvedi once regretted aurat tumhari yahi kahani aachal mein hai doodh aur aankhon mein pani abla jeevan yes sorry abla. i may interrupt abla jeevan hai tumhari yahi kahani aachal mein hai doodh aur aankhon mein pani yes from yashodara so uh a beacon of hope may be identified in the way women can now become so empowered as to seek legal remedy and legal relief especially through such sensitive people as the protection officers the magistrates legal counselors and the internal complaints committee the women cell of any college or university can really play a proactive role in sensitizing female students as well as other women so that they become knowledgeable enough after we after all we know knowledge is power for our forewarned is forearmed so they become knowledgeable enough to know the different aspects of law which might assist them in seeking legal relief when they are subjected to violence from any quarter in life so once again i express my thanks to our honorable resource person and we now move towards the eagerly awaited question answer session i now request my colleagues kazi shabnam banu and bhumika pradhan to take over those who want to ask questions those present on this platform who want to ask questions or to make observations they may unmute themselves and speak or they may post their questions in the chat box those who are following uh, this program on youtube they may also post their questions on the chat box and we will be glad to present them to the resource person for clarification over to you shabna ma'am pomika Uh, thank you shantanuga and uh, thank you so much ma'am for your valuable talk uh, now here i find the number of questions uh, have come for our honorable uh, resource person uh, from the participants uh, the first one is uh, from uh, shubhra bakul karmakar she is asking shubhra bakul karmakar she is asking about Uh, Ma'am, what do you think that remedies are available for the protection of women against violence will be enforced properly in practice? As we are passing through a critical time, along with we have to adopt and accept new normal concept derived due to pandemic. This is the question from Subra Bakul Karmakar. Can you repeat, please? sorry ma'am ma'am what do you think that remedies are available for the yes. protection of women against violence will be enforced properly in practice as we are passing through a critical time along with we have to adopt and accept new normal concept derived due to pandemic yes remedies can be well then they can be realized also but of course there might be some problem regarding lockdown with uh, practical problems uh, for uh, transport and other facilities so remedies are also available and courts are there and they can be utilized but uh, the thing is that the, there is a lack of awareness because the victims do not know how to approach these forums that is even uh, whatsapp group or there are certain online uh, you can say we can say that online uh, service providers 
so they do they might not know uh, that might be the reason but remedy can be away and remedy can be realized also okay ma'am the second question is from rufsha karmakar and she is asking about uh, what you think about laws against marital rapes in india and also how pwdva procedure works with those situations marital rape right marital rape that might be a part of uh, although we we have not recognized the marital rape, rape in law but still that can be a part of domestic violence and if it is uh, declared as an offense uh, then it is a kind of violence upon women even marital rape uh, can be uh, made an offense there are suggestions regarding marital rape uh, when the wife does not give the consent then she uh, then marital rape can be there but without her consent and uh, knowledge or uh, sorry uh, without her consent she will be uh, she is of she has been uh, she has been ex, uh, i can say that she is forced by the husband to have the sexual intercourse then marital rape can also be should also be declared as an offense according to me thank you ma'am the uh, another question is uh, from lakshmi narayan uh, mahato uh, she is asking uh, why do we witness larger number of violence in the north indian state in north indian states larger violence where uh, how it is supported by any data or how can we say that in north indian states there are large number of violence i can can't understand because without support of any data or any justification how can we say that there are more number of violence in north indian states okay ma'am uh, another question is uh, do you think misuse of section 498 a are increasing from sanjay discharge yeah uh, several cases have been found that uh, when the wife is uh, claiming that she is uh, the, there is a cruelty uh, by the husbands and in laws sometimes they are misusing because a, every law has a misuse uh, but we are talking about only 498a misuse of 498a so uh, each and every law even uh, other laws are have been misused so not only 498a but other laws have been misused that i agree but not only <laughs> this every other law can be misused okay ma'am the next question is uh, from uh, rupsha karmakar she is asking uh, ma'am would you like to say something about late judgment of rape cases by indian judiciary which cases uh late judgment of rape cases by indian judiciary uh, this time uh, i have i have got i will uh, i can uh, uh, send my answer by whatsapp but uh, right now i don't have any uh, yeah, uh, the record of the cases here uh, regarding the rape cases so i can send it by whatsapp there have been many cases shohini banerjee is asking how can women avail of legal aid in west bengal legal aid there is a legal aid service authority under legal service authority act there are legal aid forums at the state state legal service authority uh, in each and every state so uh, people can uh, people go there uh, for Uh, the, those who are poor, uh, I, uh, everybody is not able to get the legal aid. But the women, the vulnerable section, the children, they can avail legal aid under the Legal Service Authority Act to the state forums. There are state forums in each and every uh, district. Sorry, in each and every state, there are uh, legal aid authorities. 
So they can avail. Okay, ma'am. Uh, there is another question. Is that in uh, from Sanjay Vishash? Uh, he is asking about in how many Indian states online affair can be done. How many? In how many Indian Are states? How many Indian states? Uh, online yes. FIR can be done. Online FIR can be done. How, in, in, uh, how in, many, how may, in how many Indian states? Online Indian FIR states. can be done. Oh. Uh, in, uh, sorry, I cannot tell you how many states in online FIR can be made. In some, it can be done, but uh, how many states I cannot tell you the numbers. Okay, ma'am, uh, uh, there is another question. Is honor killing a part of domestic violence and who, who will fight for the justice of the girl killed? Honor killing, of course, uh, might be, uh, yes, it can be taken uh, uh, under Domestic Violence Act because uh, when, suppose, the father kills the daughter uh, because she has married in a different uh, caste or religion, Sometimes it happens. There are killings. So that can be also more taken as a domestic violence, of course. Uh, but there should be a separate law. Uh, till now, there is no separate law for honor killing. But uh, the law has to be made by the parliament in this respect. Because it is also a kind of torture, uh, violence, or even killing. So killing can also come. Even it will come under murder also and domestic violence act also. But actually, there is no use of uh, filing a case under Domestic Violence Act because already the person has been killed. So that will be the, uh, because here the remedies are in the nature of uh, civil, civil remedies. Basically, the civil remedies are there in Domestic Violence Act. But honor killing, direct, uh, you can say that it is a murder. Now it can be taken under IPC. And uh, the remedies can be claimed there. Okay, ma'am. Uh, there are so many questions, but uh, due to short time, uh, I have to move. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, our question answer session has uh, come to the end. Uh, now, I am requesting uh, to Dr. Shantanu Gangoli uh, to, to, to take the event forward. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Dr. Kazi Shabnam Banu, ably assisted by Dr. Bhumika Pradhan for presenting so many questions to our honorable resource person, which were all answered quite brilliantly. Uh, before I move on to the last part of the program, which is the vote of thanks, I would like to inform all participants, both on Google Meet, as well as those following the program on YouTube. A feedback link will now be posted. All of you need to fill up this feedback form. Please click on the link. A feedback form will open. All of you, please fill up the feedback form and submit it. And you will receive your e-certificate after that. So there is an embargo on 100 certificates which can be mailed in full day. So, uh, once you submit the form, we will be sending you the e-certificate in due course of time within the next two or three days. So the feedback link will be posted both on the chat box of Google Meet as well as on YouTube. Kindly click on the link and fill up the form and submit it so that we may send you the e-certificate. So that is all I needed to inform you. Now I request Professor Prabhash to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Shantanuda. Good evening, everyone. I am honored and lucky to have the opportunity to give a vote of thanks on this special day. I would like to thanks 
our governing body president dr rohit mujumdar and respected principal madam for their encouragement and cooperation i would like to thanks gb member of netaji nagar day college professor navonita chatterji for her encouragement i particularly liked dr chakravarti's speech where she mentioned the need of need for awareness of legal remedies for women against domestic violence especially in this pandemic situation the way in which she explained the subject was extraordinary i would like to thank sir i would like to thanks all the organizing committee members all the teachers and non teaching staffs of our college i would like to special thanks dr kaji sabnam banu assistant professor department of chemistry and dr bhumika pradhan assistant professor department of botany for their technical support and all types of cooperation finally i would like to thanks all the participants for making this event a success thank you all on again thanks thank you very much my junior colleague professor prabhash ondol for suggesting the vote of thanks with this we come to the end of a great webinar in which all of us have been legally and socially sanitized regarding the violence that women face in society today and what they may do to seek relief and how we may aid them so that they are not discriminated against and they may seek timely help in the case of any domestic violence that they face so we come to the end of a very scholarly session i now request the principal of our college dr sonali banerji josh to formally declare this webinar closed so once again madam many many thanks namaskar on behalf of netaji nagar day college it was a pleasure hearing you and we are really enlightened but we would like to have many more such sessions because uh, legal remedies is not a very easy thing madam and from on part of the icc and on part of our equal opportunity cell if we could be of any use to um, women in distress women in the facing domestic violence we would feel that we have done a bit towards uh, uh, curbing this menace which is affecting our society so ma'am again we would be approaching you and in spite of your busy schedule you have been with us given us so much time so we are honored thank you ma'am i declare this webinar closed thank you all my colleagues thank you very much to uh, honorable principal dr sonali banerji josh so with this we come to the conclusion of this webinar i am sure in future we will be meeting again and again with many such knowledge enhancing webinars which have become the new normal in the academic world today and keeps us progressing and keeps us active thank you very much Thank you. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you.